So we got a region bounded by y equals e to the negative x. Y equals a one minus e to the one minus e to the minus x, and x equals zero. About the line y equals two and a half. All right. So what is step one? Graph the sucker. All right, let's do that. All right, e to the minus x. So the y-intercept is one, and it's a decreasing exponential function. So it's going to look something like that. The other one is one minus e to the minus x. What in the world does that look like? It's going to sort of look like the opposite. So I could read write it as minus e to the minus x plus 1. And that looks like the transformation form I'm more used to. So it's going to be this graph that's already here. We're going to reflect across the x-axis and then raise it up 1. So that's how I'm going to graph this out. All right, you could think of this as basically negative 1 f of x plus 1, where f of x is the original e to the minus x function. So I'm just relating this back to transformations, pre-calculus one, all that good stuff. So rotate or flip across the x-axis, raise it up one. Our y-intercept is now going to be zero, and the graph's going to look like this, right there. Now, of course, on homework questions, you can use a graph and calculator, Desmos, whatever other tools you got, but none of those will help you on a quiz or a midterm. So that's why I'm going through the how to graph this out properly. All right, how do I know where this point actually is? It's probably going to be important. So we've got to intersect these two curves. So we're solving a system. All right, how do we solve this system? So most of our systems are not going to be linear, so you can't use all those cool linear algebra tricks with matrices. So what are the two general ways to solve a system? Elimination. Elimination, what's the other way? Substitution. Substitution. So whichever way you want to go, I think it's pretty obvious elimination will work really well here. So however you want to figure this out. There should be one point of intersection according to this graph. You shouldn't get two points of intersection. So we got a y value 1 half. How do I get my x value? Plug it back in. I think the first equation is slightly easier. So let's go for that one instead of the second equation. So we got 1 half equals e to the minus x. How in the world do I solve for x? Natural log. So I'm going to use the definition of a log. This is log base e of a half equals negative x. So it's ln of 1 half, bring the negative to the other side. So negative ln 1 half is equal to x. All right, so we got our xy right there. So our point, if we write it out, negative ln 1 half, comma, 1 half. So there's our coordinates to that point. Any questions on getting that? So if I need the x value, it's negative ln of 1 half. And the y value is just one half, and we got one and zero. Oh, that's weird. Negative ln one half looks like it's positive. What is is natural log of one half positive or negative without that? Wait, is it one 
So it's integral from one to one half, one over t dt. So you're actually gonna go pick up the negative area right there, because you're going from one back to one half. So natural log of one is zero, natural log of small values is actually negative. Natural log of bigger than, values bigger than one is positive. So ln one half is actually already uh, negative. So by putting a negative sign in front of it, this is a positive value right here. So don't just assume because there's a negative in front that the entire value is negative. There's another way to see this. You can use that coefficient as a power. So 1 half um, to the negative first power. And of course, 1 half to the negative first power, ln of 2. These are just algebra rules for logs. I mean, I saw them this morning because I taught pre-calculus class this morning, but maybe it was a year for you. It was an hour for me. All right, so I like natural log 2 way better. No. You can ask somebody else later. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I still haven't rotated anything. All right, so 2.5 better be bigger than natural log 2 or we're going to have some problems. So I could ask a calculator what is natural log 2, but it is less than 2.5. So I'll just draw my vertical line right there. We're going to rotate. All right. Oh, details. Not that they're important. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's already labeled right there. Okay. So you can go with shells or disks. I know that you said this was from 6.1, but I'm not going to tell you that you should not, that you have to solve it in this way. So we could go disks, we could go shells. Doesn't matter which one. Uh, if we go uh, disk method, this is very much hollow because none of this touches the rotation axis. So it's definitely going to be a hollow shape. Uh, let's just go with uh, disk method just because it's from 6.1. So I'm going perpendicular. So is this an x or a y integral? It's an x. So you got to squeegee horizontally. So change your x coordinate. It's a dx integral. All right, we're using disks. So that means volume is going to be pi integral big R squared minus little r squared. So I need my two radii functions. All right, so we got big R of x. I will label those on the graph right now. Here is big R, and here is little r. So, any questions on how I drew those up there? All right, so our big R, what is the big value of big R? Nope. So big, remember, we're looking vertically, so big is at the top. If this is horizontally, big would be on the left. But big is on the top when you're doing vertical. So what is the top? 2.5. A lot of times, almost all the time, either one of these two is generally your rotation axis. Where do you think 2.5 minus that distance from the bottom? Because the 2.5 is all the way at the top from the x-axis. Yeah, so 2.5 is the big part of that. It's the the big um, part of this radii measurement. Now we're going to do minus the small. So what is, so I want to use the bottom curve. 
So that bottom curve was written as So that's that second one, negative e to the negative x plus one. So I'll try to squeeze this label in here. And I can cheat and use smaller pen. That's probably too small. So this is y equals negative e negative x plus one. So that's the curve I want to use for this. All right, so any questions about using that, that bottom curve there? You wanna make sure you subtract correctly, so I'm subtracting the whole thing. So I'll be distributing that negative. All right, we can simplify this a little bit. 2.5 minus one minus e, or plus e to the minus x. So we have 1.5 plus e to the minus x. So that is big R. Now we're going for the little r. All right, little r, what is the big value of the little radius? So 2.5 again. What is small? So that's our e to the minus x and I'll label that right here y equals e to the minus x. So we're taking that e to the minus x now. There's really no simplification to do on that right there. And we're basically ready, ready to write in the volume integral. So big R is 1.5 plus e to the minus x squared minus little r 2.5 minus e to the minus x dx oh yeah absolutely all right what else do i need i'm almost there endpoints so are they going to be x or y values just looking at our integral they're going to be x because we got a dx integral so it should be pretty clear because we did all that work before. So zero to ln two, that's where we're going. All right, so there's our volume integral. It should just be uh, square these guys out, simplify, and it just maybe a u sub or two to get through this integral. So I, I don't think the integral will be bad. It'll just be a little tedious. All right. And any other questions about this problem? Nope. So I want to warn you if, uh, if you go uh, shell method on this. So I'm going to just draw right on top. We'll create a new pen here. What color? Orange? I think orange will look OK. Uh, generally, your intersection points. It's now, <clears throat> if I labeled the point, it was uh, one half ln two, right. oops, or the other way around. Depending on if it's an x or y integral, uh -huh. this one was an x integral, so I used the x coordinate at that point. What I'm about to do is look at the shell method. So if I go with shells, I will have a cross section looks like that. Now I'm going to go from on the y axis, picking y values. I'm not looking at x values now when it comes to moving that cross section but around. But for the this method, it would be the x value of the intersection will be your end point. Yep, it's, it's the biggest x value we had, which on this case happened to be that intersection point. Yeah, I got confused. I thought it was from the x value to um, beyond that point, and that was the, the solve we were looking at. So if, if I did go shell method here, we have a slight problem because the curve changes. These use different functions for the big part of their uh, curves. 
So you'd actually have to go zero, y value zero to one half, and then y value one half to one. You won't be able to double it because the outer volume would be a little bigger than the inner volume. Even though I believe our region is symmetric, if, if we rotate it about a vertical line, then it, we could double it. But the problem is there'll be kind of a slightly smaller rotated volume and a slightly bigger rotated volume, just because of the way we're going to rotate here. So when in doubt, I recommend don't use symmetry. Only use symmetry if you're like 100%, definitely this is symmetric, they're both the same. But if there's any, like, oh, I'm not sure, is it symmetric? Just default to no. It might be a little more work, but uh, less chance of mistakes. So hopefully you notice over time that this is how the difficulty starts to feel, kind of like the function we graphed. Starts out feeling very difficult, and then at some point it feels a little easier. So hopefully you're somewhere in this area right now, where some problems still feel tough, but some problems are starting to feel pretty easy. All right, let's get back into some shell problems. So on this last problem, the one that we left off on, and I think this was our, yeah, this was our first problem that we were doing. Let's go ahead and finish this off. <clears throat> so we're going zero to four, and I'm just filling in r of x is just x, h of x is square root x dx. How in the world do we integrate this? A u sub is not going to save us. So if x is a square root, uh, if u is square root x, du is not quite x. Probably that actually may work. There's a way easier way to integrate this. No. It might work. Yep, we're going to use algebra. So, yep, x to the three halves, and then it's a super easy anti power rule. So, that's the integral for the volume. All right, our next example. Region bounded by y equals square root x, the x-axis. And the line x equals four. I feel like that's the one we just did. Uh-oh, nope, that is the one we just did, forget that. All right, we'll run back to that previous example. Y equals three X minus X squared. In quadrant one. Rotate it about the line X equals negative, I'll just do negative one. All right, we did solve this problem using disks, and right now I want you to solve this problem using shells. So go ahead and graph out the region. And this first quadratic equation here, y equals 3x minus x squared, of course you can write it as negative x squared plus 3x. So it's going to be a sad parabola. What are the x-intercepts? What are the x-intercepts if you see it factored as x times 3 minus x? 3 and 0. So it's a sad parabola. x-intercepts are 3 and 0. 
I'm going to draw a slightly bigger graph because I'll probably make it look horrible by drawing on top of everything. We got 0, 3, and it's a sad parabola. All right, so we want the part only in quadrant 1. So we'll just ignore the bottom parts of that parabola. So we just want that arch right there. Rotate about x equals negative 1. All right, so this will be a hollow shape. All right, we're going shell method. So our cross sections are parallel. That's the big difference. Cross sections are parallel, not perpendicular. So if you've got perpendicular cross sections, you're going to have disks or annulus. Annuli, annuluses. That confused me. Omar has it. I think annuli, like radii or other words that I can't think of. All right, we need a. Oh, so first of all, function of x or function of y? X. X. So you squeeze your window. Function of x. So this is a dx integral. And we are going to need a radius and a height. So let's <coughs> let's draw what this rotates into. So it's going to turn into a shell. So there's the shell this is going to rotate into. I need a radius of x function and an h of x function. So I'm going to trace those back to the original. So what I have drawn in here already, the cross section is h of x is the height. And the radius goes along the, I could, you can draw it anywhere you want. I could have drawn it up at the top right here. It doesn't really matter where you draw it. I usually pick right on the axis though. So this is r of x. All right, so do your best to write down h of x and r of x. And if you get stuck on one, just find the other one. For our h of x? Oh, no. Right. So we just want to go, yeah, our, our little for, or small for h of x is just 0. Because we're going using basically the axis, because we were constrained to the first quadrant. All right, what about r of x? What's big for r of x? So what is the big for r of x? That's just x. So it's a little tricky, because it's not really written on the board. But if you think about this point right here, basically the x-coordinate is x, the y-coordinate, the way I drew it is 0. So we're going from x. That's big. What is small? Negative 1. And if I draw, write the coordinates, that coordinate will be negative 1, 0. And of course, I'm using the x-coordinate of there. 
All right, so radius is x plus one, and all we have to do is put this into the volume integral, which is, this one is actually two pi rh. This definitely needs to end up on your formula page. I think I put it in a box up here somewhere. We're using this guy. It does not look like the, I mean, it looks a little bit like the disk method, but not really. The other one is a pi uh, big R squared minus little r squared. So it definitely looks different. Now, what about boundaries? Do I need x or y values for my endpoints? Do I need x? And this one. So is it negative one to three or zero to three? I guess zero to three. So it'll be zero to three. If you go negative one to three, you'll be counting all this stuff down here, and when you rotate, it's going to count as negative because the top and bottom f change places. And we're in the first quadrant only. And yeah, we we would be we would basically be getting all this would all count as negative area the way we would compute it. All these volumes will be definite integrals. If you, uh, it wouldn't really make sense to not have endpoints on here it, when it comes to representing a volume. Um, I was looking this because you hadn't put it on there yet, so I wasn't sure if you were not. Yeah, I was just leaving, I was being lazy and not, not writing A, B. I mean, I think when I scrolled up, it has an A and a B right up there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yep. And I kept this one generic because you could think of it as a dx integral or a dy integral. It depends on how your cross sections look. So that cro your cross section orientation is entirely determinant of dx or dy. So those are the only example problems that I have in here. Actually, let's do the exact same problem <coughs> using shells, but I want to change how we rotate. So we'll do the exact same region. Uh, I just want to rotate. Let's rotate at about y equals 10. So I picked the same region just so we can not waste time graphing it out. We know exactly what it looks like. Uh, now I need way more y value. All right, we're supposed to use shell method, so are my cross sections going to be horizontal or vertical? Going to be horizontal, because I got to go parallel with my rotation axis, so I get shells or cylinders. All right, now does this make us uh, give us a dy integral or a dx integral? So we got a dy. So I probably don't have room to draw my rotated cross section, but I think we hopefully can visualize it just rotates into a, this will be a pretty short cylinder. The height will be small, but the radius will be pretty big. All right, now I'm gonna label. So here, this vertical piece is now the radius. And this is a y integral, so that's r of y. And this measurement here, will be h of y. 
So I could draw the whole rotated cylinder, uh, but you should be able to tell off this picture that we have a radius, that vertical segments the radius and the horizontal is the height. It's a little strange to call it height, but any questions on that layout right there? All right, so, <clears throat> so do your best to write down R of Y and H of Y. I think the radius will be way easier. Don't we have to turn the Y equals 3X minus X squared into a function of Y? You have to convert that quadratic into a function of Y. And there's only one way to do that, and that's complete the square. So you can, do, you can write down your radius of y without doing any complete the square stuff. So what, for the radius, what is the big? 10. 10. What is the small? Oh, man. So I need a function of y. So what is <coughs> the coordinates of this point right here? Um, forget about the x. I'm just going to call the y coordinate y. What I'm going to have here is some g of y function that I need to compute. It's going to take a little time because I need to complete the square. It's not an easy thing to do. But the y coordinate is just going to be y. So that's 10 minus y for the radius right there. Now we have that difficult task of solving. Then we have 3x minus x squared. I like to have my x squared is positive, so let's go with adding things to the other side. x squared minus 3x equals negative y. And complete the square in this form will be a little easier than trying to do with the negative x squared term. So do your best to complete the square. Algebra questions getting this, these two curves. So, why do we have two curves? So, we're trying to write x as a function of y. So, we have to kind of turn our thinking sideways when it comes to functions, because usually we have y as a function of x. So, we have to think about the two variables changing roles. Now, if you look, <coughs> That you cannot write this as a function of y, as a single function of y, because it are, I've already drawn a line that fails a horizontal line test. So what happens is this value right here is 3 halves. That x value is 3 halves. So if you're on one side of 3 halves, you have one function. If you're on the other side of 3 halves, you have a different function. So we'll label. So over here, I have x equals whatever I wrote. 3 halves plus, or my, this one is 3 halves minus square root 9 fourths minus y. And when I'm on the right half of this curve, that's y equals, oh yeah, x equals, this is x equals 3 halves 
plus square root 9 fourths minus y. So it splits it right down the middle there. Now, the nice thing about this, big minus small is pretty obvious now. I need a big function of y and a little function of y for my h of y. So what's the big function of y? It's the one on the right side. Small function of y, it's the one on the left side. So we got big and small right here. We don't have to do any more work. So 3 halves minus 3 halves cancels. We have 9 fourths minus y plus 9 fourths minus y. So we got 2 times 9 fourths minus y. All right, so we got our r, we got our h. And all you do is put in the integral and integrate. It looks like probably a u sub will take care of this funky part inside the square root. I would not do a trig sub because this y is not squared. If that y was squared, it would be a trig sub. But the y is not squared, so it's just a regular u sub. That'll get us out of the ugly square root. So we'll just combine it all together. 2 pi integral r h. 2 pi integral r 10 minus y times 2. 9 halves minus y to the 1 half dy. All right, what y values are we going to use? I need my endpoints. What's my little endpoint? Zero. What's my big endpoint? So 3 is the x value, which really doesn't have anything to do with what I need. I need to go up the y axis. So what y values up here? So we could, <clears throat> there's a few ways to do this. I think if we use intuition in these two green curves, can you see what the x value should be here? Three halves. Why is that? Because when, when oh, why am I looking there? Wait, three halves? Ah. So x is 3 halves at that point. So if I want to know what y is, I just plug in 3 halves in for x and then solve for y. So it's a little strange, but I'll plug in 3 halves for x and solve for y. So I think we got enough room to do it over here. So add 3 halves to the other side. We got 0 equals negative square root 9 fourths minus y. Multiply by negative 1, square both sides. So y equals 9 fourths. So we're going from 0 to 9 fourths. There's other ways to figure this out. You could maximize our original equation right here. Set y prime equal to 0. That'll give you 3 halves. And then plug in 3 halves and tell me what y is. That's another way to do it. Um, you can also use your parabola skills. It's basically the vertex, the y coordinate of the vertex of this parabola, negative b over 2a, comma, y of negative b over 2a. So lots of ways you can accomplish that.